Hello, welcome to another episode of Festival Forum. I'm your host, Nick Davies, and today we are here with the cast and crew of Welcome to Happiness. Guys, welcome. Thank you. Why don't you go ahead and introduce your, yourselves? I'm uh, Oliver Thompson, writer and director. Uh, Josh Brenner, Oliver Thompson's uh, manager and friend. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I actually I play a role, uh, the role of Ripley in the movie. Bay Dara's producer and Oliver Thompson's uh, personal valet. <laughs> why are we handing this back to me? Just <laughs> under the assumption I, I'll be fielding all I of these. I think you're going to start it out. It <laughs> okay. looks like that's We're the way it's going to go. Microphone men. <laughs> yes. really what, that's really what they're here for. That's the official. Oh. Well, you know, you did it very well. I was very impressed. That was good technique oh, across the board there. I got the job. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, uh, how does it feel to be uh, at Newport Beach Film Festival, first of all? Absolutely fantastic. Yeah? Absolutely fantastic. This is the greatest festival we've ever been to. Seriously, nice. it's really great. I mean, nice. the, the opening night party alone kind of, I think, says everything. Oh. I've, ne I've never quite experienced uh, anything like that. Never mind, you know, the films and meeting the filmmakers and being part of that whole creative, fun, cultural part of it. Mm -hmm. The opening night gala, that, that's really... Uh, free food, free drinks. <laughs> I mean, yeah, enough he, said. I'm sorry, when was... I don't think I got my... <laughs> I don't know what uh, Josh wasn't invited, invited to the yeah, opening. No, it doesn't sound like it, but I'm glad you all had fun. That must have been nice. That must have been really great. It was a blast. Yeah. We, specifically because you weren't there, it was kind of, uh, that was premeditated. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't go, Josh. Just don't kidding. Go. Yeah, no, we love it. Seriously, here, uh, let me ask you a question. Have you been to Newport Beach before? I, I for one, was not aware that Southern California had beaches. Uh, really? So, no, this is, uh, this is one of my first experiences at a beach city, which I'm learning is what it's called. Yeah. Uh, dr driving down, I learned about Manhattan Beach, Redondo <laughs> Beach, Inglewood, not a beach. Not a beach. But, but near, but beach. near, uh, near uh, you, you, the beach cities. You're right. Uh, you, you, you pass through it on the way to the beach cities. This is so like his directing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, I, I do actually, I'm joking because I am aware of beaches, but I don't get to come to the lovely, nice parts of Los Angeles, the greater Los Angeles area, uh, such as this. And for films, well, that's doubly exciting. He's lying and he is constantly Instagramming pictures of himself on the beach, in, in towels, and in, in it, topless. <laughs> right. You are a beach bum. I Care to comment, Mr. Penner? I specifically said I would come here if we did not talk about my Instagram account. <laughs> <laughs> that is private. Which for the audience is? I, uh, I legitimately do not have social media. <laughs> that is not, not a joke. It's Brenner Beach Bum Brenner. at Instagram. And I don't know how Instagram accounts work. <laughs> Hashtag Instagram Beach Bum. We're so plugged in. Sometimes you, you cast an actor in a role because you know, he's on a show about technology, and you feel like he must have just an enormous social media outreach that can help promote the film. And then you meet him, you're like, this guy's great, everyone's gonna love him on social media, he'd be so great, and then he tells you that he just doesn't understand computers. I believe the word Luddite was thrown around, just tossed around. Is that, you can tell that to my flip phone, sir. <laughs> I was just gonna say, is that, is that bad press for Bay to be revealing as a star of Silicon Valley that you don't even own a computer? Is that, is that, does that not look good? That's why I don't get that much screen time. <laughs> You're rocking that Motorola razor, aren't you? Oh no! I'll tell you right. I'll tell you right now. I will not use a razor oh. because it makes the sound. It, there's that buzzing. It's like it's a razor. They were like, "What do we? What should we name this phone?" <laughs> well, it sounds, it sounds like, like an electric razor. Let's call it the razor. It kind of looks like a razor too. It's got that you know silver kind of uh, finish look. Yeah, I. It's I, very similar to my Mach Three. I Turbo. hate it. Yeah. I hate everything about it. Well, not a publicity uh, video for the Razor happening right now. But now, on the other hand, the Samsung Galaxy S6. <laughs> now, that's a piece of equipment. The next big thing is already here. Wow. <laughs> Hold on, my, uh, my iPhone's getting happened. jealous right yes, now. Exactly. Yes, exactly. I don't know what just happened. Wait, you have really have the six? I have the six. I don't even have the six. Anyway, let's let them uh, talk more about their phones. Did you make I, a movie? I, I was just yeah. curious if the... Oh, I'm sorry. Do, you, do we yeah, need to get me, into this? Me, I was uh, going to continue talking about the Samsung here, Galaxy wait, 6. You guys are here for... Uh, I think you did some sort of movie. Uh, we did. Uh, let's, let's talk about that a It's called bit. Samsung Galaxy 6. <laughs> no, uh, Welcome to Happiness is the uh, name of the movie. <laughs> it's applause for the, for the picture. Um, 
Yeah, and um, Bay, why don't you give a little plot synopsis? You're very good at that. I've been watching him do it all weekend. He's, he's kind of got it down. So. And he's got a nice jacket on, too. Much so nicer than mine. I apparently missed the dress-up memo. Well, normally uh, people, they like, what's your movie about? And I say, well, what's your favorite movie? And they'll say, The Matrix. And I'll say, it's exactly like <laughs> The Matrix. Or if they'll say, uh, my favorite movie is Citizen Kane. Exactly like Citizen Kane, only more modern. So, right. but, but, truth, real but the real answer is, it's about a guy um, who's, who's, he lives in his apartment, he's a children's book author, and he has a magic, mystical doorway in his closet that people only enter, who come, people come to his apartment, strangers, he asks them questions, he puts them through these little tests, and if, they, if they're worthy, they go through this doorway. Well, he doesn't know where it goes. And one day he finds out where it goes, and it drives him a little nuts. And he sort of goes in this, this downward spiral of questioning everything, and then... Uh, and meanwhile, we're uh, up tag, right? Uh, we're, we're also following uh, a B story of someone who will ultimately end up at the door. So we're kind of seeing, you know, Woody is the character, played by Kyle Gellner, who is sort of uh, the gatekeeper to the door. And then uh, Niles, played by Brendan Sexton, is the one who we're sort of watching where these people come from. And then Josh's role is uh, kind of, I don't want to, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of. Brendan and Kyle uh, with enough snacks, uh, room temperature water. And uh, keep their Sam Samsungs charged. That, well, most important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, did you bring snacks for us today? Oh my God. Uh, you know what, I actually have a few loose mints. <laughs> Uh, not a joke, not a joke. To, uh, Here, look. To I, half of a peanut. I have actually, two loose got... mints. Uh, these are, I believe they're ice breakers. I love uh, ice breakers. Should we break the ice? I'll yeah. have one. Uh, this will help the interview. Oh, <laughs> None for bad. Oh. You got to have fresh breath when you interview. You oh. know. We were in line for a movie yesterday, and some women, I'm like, I suppose mints, and she pulls two loose mints out of her pocket. She's like, would you like one? And I said, my yes. Because my name's Josh Brenner. I said, yes. No, this is true. And, and, I, and I, ate, <laughs> I ate one of those mints, and now she's coming to the screen. Right on. So anyway. That's a story for the children. <laughs> yeah. What to do candy. in a situation where somebody offers you loose mints. Where someone offers you candy. Yeah. No, no, candy would be suspicious, but loose mints, <laughs> totally uh, on the up and up. That, right. That's how they're getting away with it these days. They've moved away from the candy. Wait a second, I got to make a call. <laughs> You need, right? Yeah, I, I am. This is gold. Let me tell you, this mm -hmm. is gold. Mm -hmm. What are those uh, other metals that it's more like? Uh, platinum. Alu aluminium. Aluminium. Yes. Um, hmm. What else? Bronze. Hey, bro everybody loves bronze. Bronze is good. Yeah. It's the second loser. Yes. It so is. thank you. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for 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 saying our interview is third place. Looks like we know how we're going to finish at the festival. <laughs> Not taking the cup of today. Gold. I should have said gold. Oh well. Anyway, sorry. Uh, no, so we're, we're thrilled to be friends. You guys, um, how did you all work together? I, obviously, I'm sensing a great chemistry here. Oh. Um, you know, it's it's interesting because I, I don't quite, I, I'm not crazy about either of these two people. Oh, really? No. Or on or offset. No. You should have you should have told me I would have moved the chair a little bit further I was, away. I was thinking that maybe we should early okay. on. Or no. I could have had you sit here. We, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, we, uh, we worked together uh, great. I, I, I think, uh, you know, it started um, with Bay and I. The, that's the way the, the movie came together. And, um, and Kyle, actually, the three of us. Um, so we sort of had those elements in place, you know, a producer and a writer and a director and a star. And, um, and then from there, it, it just kind of kept building and um, this person sort of can help attach this person, and, and, and then, then you start getting, you know, going into the business side of things and getting money and doing things like that. But um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it just kind of came together, sort of, yeah, kind of uh, easily. I hate to say that, but it's, it hasn't been uh, all, you know. There's certainly been valleys with the, with the peaks. So I don't want to make, I don't make it. I don't want to make it sound like it's been uh, all peaches and cream. We've certainly had our well, making a mo you know, movies. It's hard, you know. It's a lot of work, and um, so it's just it's not without. And and and, and then uh, releasing a movie is harder, so, <laughs> you know. Absolutely. That's, so that's the biggest <clears throat> valley that we're, you know, that I think any filmmaker almost has to climb. Maybe not. Maybe you got to get your movie going. That's a that's a, a hurdle. And then making it is kind of fun, I think. And then. Uh, and then getting it out there, that's a whole other beast. Do so. you feel like with the way technology is nowadays with the internet, Netflix, and other platforms like that, that it's easier? 
for you to get your movie out there and well there's certainly yeah, there's the there certainly is the incredible uh, opportunity the fallback to uh, you know you can self-distribute these days so there is that and, you know it's like it's affected the music industry it's affected the, the movie industry now you know so you always have that in your back pocket there's um, things like Amazon and iTunes at your disposal uh, for any filmmaker um, so I would say yeah but the question still then you know becomes promotion and how do you um, get it out there and that's what things like this are for beautiful faces like these except help. for Josh he's not big on technology right <laughs> that... I won't help anyone do anything <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not true. You gave me a mint. That was kind of helpful. Oh, you, you shouldn't eat that mint, by the way. I just want to be clear. <laughs> Nobody should eat. Yeah, yeah, don't. <laughs> Even having it directly contacting your skin is probably, oh, geez. probably a mistake. Well, that's a waste of a mint. <laughs> uh, it did kind of bounce nicely, though, didn't it? I mean, it, Well, it, luckily it landed on the felt. I'll pick it up later and eat it. It's, it's okay. I'll see to it. Um, I just want to say that I didn't have to do any of the not fun parts. As Oliver said, uh, the, the stuff before is really hard and the stuff after is really hard and, and uh, making it is super fun. And I only got to have the fun parts. And I would say that's in large part because Oliver and Bay create an unbelievable working environment uh, that is both uh, efficient and artistic and intelligent, uh, while at the same time being loose and fun and uh, spirited is a word that comes to mind, which is a terrible word, but it's true in this case because everyone was just there enjoying themselves and being excited to make something together. Uh, and I was excited every day to go to work and be a part of that, and it's in large part because it's in whole part because of them. I'm, 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 as, I'm as red as these letters back here, I think. Can I'm can blushing. I, can I say something? Uh, I always want to say that all the, the cast and the crew, no one was there who didn't want to be there. This was not a payday for anybody. So even the cast especially and the crew, the crew all read the script. Like they all knew what we were doing and wanted to be a part of it. And that was really important. Was find, finding the right people and, and we can take credit for putting them together, but it was, it was the combination of all of these different personalities and talents and all these great people that came in to, to contribute that made it so fun. Mm -hmm. That was very well put. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Mind. Are you a scriptwriter too? Not yet. <laughs> um, Thank you, Josh. That was extremely nice of you to say. I have more, actually. <laughs> I, Take because, the floor. Well, I'll tell you, uh, I've worked on three sets, maybe four at this point. I'm very seasoned. And uh, the thing that was so striking about this set is that everyone, uh, uh, from the tops on down, were like... Who are you pointing to when you say tops? Because you certainly don't mean us. Yeah, no. I didn't. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're right on the other side. <laughs> no, every, everyone had such uh, artistic vision and so many athletes, like real people who have real knowledge of a broad, broad uh, subject of artistic genres. I mean, just being on set, I learned about music and visual art and architecture, which he knows a ton about all of those things, uh, and uh, uh, House of Cards and um, <laughs> literature and um, other Netflix programs. Uh, but really, it was, it was amazing. Wait, there's other Netflix programs than House of Cards? Again, I'm not very familiar with the internet. <laughs> uh, but no, both of these guys and everyone else on set was the truly artists with vision and and integrity and it just was made it a really satisfying uh, wonderful place to work Excellent. get this away from me. yeah i have to just okay. thank you again uh, i can't uh say enough amazing things about our cast so to repay the favor i mean our cast is is just ridiculous i mean it, it's really incredible and we're so uh just honored and, and thrilled to have had you know our first this is our first feature for you know for bay and i and um it just kept growing, and some of these people we started, you know, like, we got uh, Nick Offerman, and then, um... Francis Conroy. Francis Conroy. I, I, I'm not laughing, I'm not looking, I'm looking at Babe about, wondering about a, a person who I'm wondering if I'm allowed to say. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I just won't, I guess. Um, and cut all this. Josh. Uh, <laughs> Josh uh, well, Josh Brenner is, 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 is kind of the... Uh, Wait, Josh who? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The cast, you know, with, uh... 
uh, Olivia Thurlby and and I, I mentioned Kyle earlier, who is um, maybe I'm, I'm biased. I don't know. I really believe this is. He's a brilliant actor, and I think that this is the, the best role. I, I just think it's the best he's ever done. He he just knocked this out of the park, uh, Grand Slam. He really, he's really phenomenal in this movie. Um, again, I don't know. I don't feel like I feel like I'm allowed to say that because it's not me. I didn't, you know, I didn't have to do anything. I, I just said action. Uh, so and it, cut. And cut. Yeah. <laughs> but even that, you know, if I wouldn't have said that, we would have been okay. Um, <laughs> Because he just would have kept going and just being brilliant. Um, You'd be still be shooting the movie at this point. I think, yeah, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Still would have been the first shot. Um, actually, you know, forgetting to say cut is good. This is where you get some of the best stuff. So one of my favorite moments is is with uh, shoot again uh, with you and Proctor. <laughs> That's the. <laughs> I also want to mention that Brendan Sexton III is just so marvelous in this film. Yes, he is. Um, and he'll be, he'll be there in, he'll be here like in an hour. Yeah. But um, just, and his beard deserves billing too. He has this beard <laughs> that, that, that we should have given like top billing in this film. Yeah. But also like Padgett Brewster who just is this incredible, per, Molly. like Molly Quinn. Yeah, and I mean, it's just, absurd. it's just ridiculous. It's just absolutely ridiculous. And, and they all like wanted to be there. And that, was just, that just blows our mind. We're so it's unbelievably like grateful. Josh, again. And, and, and it just keeps coming back to <laughs> It keeps coming back to Josh. The difficulty. And, and as a matter of fact, I think what this, what this interview is really about is him trying to make up for really a lackluster uh, attendance effort, um, performance, um, and, and just sort of all together attitude. That's what a lot, of, a lot of this is sort of a reimbursement, I think, almost. That's what you get when you go with Brenner. <laughs> He doesn't have he doesn't have class or <laughs> decorum. <laughs> well, on that note, let's take a look at the trailer for the film. True or false? I'm happy. Does that mean you or me? You probably. Look, I don't have all the answers, okay? But I'm telling you, people come here. People that I've never met, they come here, and when I leave them alone in this closet, I never see them again. You have a time machine in your closet, Woody? No, it's not a time machine. Do you believe in coincidence? Depends on how you define coincidence, I suppose. You have no idea what you have here, do you? Just do what he says, okay? Even if it seems peculiar. What's on the other side? Honestly, I have no idea. So this was just here when you moved in? Hm. You've always been content, Woody. What happened? That's one of the people. One of the strangers that comes over here to disappear in your closet? Yes. Maybe I wouldn't have been so content if I knew the truth. What did he do to deserve this? Well, I slipped 10 feet from a door. I'm somehow not worthy. You've let something you understand very little about completely overtake you. You need to get some help, man. I need you to trust me. I want you to come with me to my apartment. I want to show you something. So we're back here with the cast and crew of Welcome to Happiness, and uh, guys, what can I say? This is seriously one of the best interviews that I've done. This, this has been extremely well, thank fun. Thank you so yeah. much. We, yeah. I think we owe that to, to, to Mr. Brenner. This is the only interview I've ever done. <laughs> I can see what. great about it. Um, I just want to tell you about the trailer that you guys all just watched. It was a difficult movie to cut a trailer for because there's so much we just don't want to show people. Like I'm, I go to a movie and I see a trailer for a movie I want to see and I run out of the theater because I don't want to know anything. And these days they tell you everything. everything. So it was kind of a challenge to make people interested and intrigued in what the film's about but not give them so much that we left a lot of surprises for them. A lot. Yeah. Any closing thoughts gentlemen? 
Josh. Just a bunch of spoilers. <laughs> just a bunch of spoilers? Uh, that we want everybody to know before they go to so, see the movie. <laughs> excellent. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you guys very much. Again, pleasure. Thank you. Thank Congratulations you so on the film and being here at Newport Beach Film Festival. And uh, this is what you missed at the festival today. about Newport Beach? Newport, well, the wind. The air is fresh. I don't feel like I'm breathing in chemicals. True. And um, the weather's always beautiful. I've only been down here last year for the festival okay. and this year. And each day is really nice. I don't know that much about the city itself other than the weather is great. And I love this festival. <laughs> That's all we have to know. Mary-Kate Wiles, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing so well. It's so exciting to be here. Well, I gotta tell you, you look so pretty tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. I wasn't sure what to go with, but I figured it's April. It can go a little springy. Yeah, you look very spring. So Thank tell me, you. we're here in Newport Beach. What do you love about Newport Beach? Oh my gosh, it's so great. There's so much to do. I actually, I live in LA, so I don't really, I haven't had the chance to come down here and sort of experience it all. I actually had another movie here last night. Night. So I've been able to be here a couple of nights and enjoy everything that Newport has to offer. Right now that was pizza. I just got some pizza and it was great. <laughs> so you were here last night for the Newport Beach Film Festival. How was that experience? It was wonderful. I mean, it's been so cool to like see all of these movies come together and they've been wonderful to us both in the other film and this film. It's really exciting to see so many creative people and great filmmakers coming together and to celebrate film, which is of course what we all love. I'm here with astronaut Gene Cernan, the last man to walk on the moon, and he's here with his film, Last Man on the Moon. Gene, how you doing? Pleasure to be here. I'm doing fine. I'm pretty excited. Uh, uh, we've shown the, uh, the film uh, several places, going way back to, to uh, UK where Mark Stewart, Mark Stewart's our produce, a producer, and we went back there and had a Sheffield Film Festival. We've been at South by Southwest and Austin, I'm from Houston, so um, we've got a great welcome there. Toronto and a few other places, it's great to be here. It really is. I, I would say Newport Beach, I heard that John Wayne is one of your heroes, and he's a, he's a native of here, so that might be some resonance there for you, right? John Wayne truly was. I guess my real hero was my dad, but John Wayne was a close second. I got to meet him, I got to know him. Uh, I've got a big old picture on a wall about this big, I think Mark's seen it. It's him on a horseback riding through a, chasing cow longhorns and riding through a rock patch, and he puts in her jean. I bet you saw more, uh, more rocks in the moon than I did here, the Duke. <laughs> and that's, that's a proud possession I have, yeah. He, uh, in fact, it didn't, he used to have a home right down here. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, he lived there. in Newport. And a, and a yacht. And a yacht. I think he had an amphibious landing craft, if I remember. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he had a lunar excursion module, too. He might have grabbed from NASA. He, he was a great guy, just a super guy. I really honestly hope that this movie revives that passion for you and other people like you, because it, it's a piece of our history, a piece of American history um, that we shouldn't overlook. We shouldn't forget. We should we should remember. It's not, just, it's not just that I hope the movie inspires your kids and grandkids and theirs to dream about doing what they didn't think they could do. I hope it re-inspires your age to remember those things that we as a nation were able to do when the chips were down. The terrible 60s. Not many people here remember what they were. Campus unrest, civil strife, the beginning of a very unpopular war. And the President of the United States had the courage and was bold enough after Alan Shepard had 16 minutes of space flight experience, up and down, to say, okay, folks, America's going to the moon. We're going. He challenged us to go. The rest is history, right? What would I like to see? We should have been back to the moon by now. We would have, should have been on our way to Mars. We will go back to the moon, and we will be on our way to Mars. The, uh, the folks in, um, in, in the administration sort of shortchanged that and delayed us a little bit, but what goes around comes around. We will indeed. I can look those fourth graders right now and say, if your big brothers and sisters give you the same opportunity someone gave me, you're the one that's going to take us to Mars. And on the way, by the way, we're going to call the moon our home once again. We are again going to go where no humans have been before. It's, it's in our nature. We are explorers, aren't we? 
It's part of what we are. our show today i'd like to thank the cast and crew of welcome to happiness and please check back every day we update with our videos what's going on in the festival i'd like to thank our sponsor visit newport beach i'm your host nick davies and thank you for watching another episode of festival forum